may not realize this being as you're an outsider. Flaring alarms indicate the same. Which means you can't ever get to. So leave. We'll see about that. Here's the elevator, but I ain't gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. Guess we keep moving forward. Look for another way up. Suicide by Marauder? And you, Nioka, what are you doing lugging a stranger into my station? You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, she hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purple berry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. No, no, no. We'll deal with information-related business later. As I said, there are bigger problems threatening my life and livelihood at this very moment. The Marauders want me dead. And since my hired hands have clearly turned to idle, it appears I need you to clear out the threat. As my newest contractor, you may call me... The Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of The Broker being a dumbass alternative. Everyone calls me that, aside from you. Oh, now they'll take action. It's about time, I tell you. I'm up to my neck and marauders in here, which, by the by, they were supposed to prevent. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently. Aside from the bits I'll be paying you, you said you wanted something from me, something information related. I'll give it to you, in person, once I'm safe. Impressive as always.
Just that good. That's the last of them, I think. Ah, Marauder free at last. I'll get the door. You hurry on it. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. And you got me my money's worth out of the C3s. I ought to have simply dealt with you in the first place. Oh no, my business is in trade. Not owing others the burden of a favor. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Ah yes, our little chat on the intercom. You're looking for the premier broker for all of Monarch. Which you knew was me, clearly. Phineas must have sent you... He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing Raptodons off your stoop. You said that in a way that was almost believable. I take offense to that. Look, okay. I was delayed by MSI and the Iconoclasts. The idiots were scrambling all transmissions to override each other's broadcasts. But as you've shut them down, I'm back in business. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose... Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant... Right. Yes. I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Someone has trust issues, though I can't hardly feign surprise. Yes, that is all. No, I am not mocking you. Much. Just step outside, flip the switch, depart forever. Understood? Good. Marvelous. We're in agreement. This is why I stopped helping out around here, you know. It's always throw this lever, shoot that marauder, save my life. Just one thing after another with you. We're almost done. Let's finish this. Terrific. I'll be here. Waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you. I may have the tiniest iota of a prickly exterior, but I must admit I have grown rather fond of you. As Nioka can attest, I do not form attachments with many. Do take care.
Why, he told us to leave without flinging insults at our persons. He really does like you, Captain. What in the void blasted hell is that? ship. Based on the gunnery attachments, I guess it's one of the board's blockade enforcers, but don't cite me on that. Oh well, a pity for the crew, but I can't see how it affects me. Hiram? Can you hear me? Did you see that? Architect saved me from swindlers and fools. Sanjar, what are you bloody doing on my channel? Did MSI or did MSI not cease broadcasting? Yes, but... Hiram! Hiram, are you there? Ah, the good captain. The truth brings us together once more. Our salvation has come crashing through the stratosphere. We need only collect its weapons. Are you mad? That's a UDL gunship. You'd probably shoot your own toes off. Ah, I see you learn nothing while dealing with these buffoons. We could use the gunship's armaments to defend Stellar Bay, but we need its targeting module. Our message is so close to breaking free of this planet and spreading to the stars. Help us secure that module and we will save our colony. Listen, I don't care a single whit what you do, so long as you leave me out of it. Which means, get off my void damn channel! I am more than finished with you lot. Ahead, Captain. I'm not keen on ships, even when they're in the best of shape. I'll stay here as well to keep an eye out. Well, here 
were destined to prevail. This is Rizzo's lab, all right. Place has more dust than sweetener now. Proximity alert. Biology human. 
protocol kill all plants suspended present your rizzo identification credentials or prepare to be downsized Attempting to disengage security protocols without proper authorization is a fireable offense. Priming weapons. Executive level password accepted as identification according to employee ID protocol A-3501. Welcome back, doctor. Be advised, Mantasaur threat level is petrifying purple berry. Please use caution. Mantisaur wounds are not covered under Rizzo's health policy. Have a productive day. Traps everywhere. There we go. As perfectly aligned as the plan itself. Ugh! <laughs> 
like a good test. This is the part where I take over, Captain. Do not fret. I've been cracking systems like these for years. <laughs> I do so love when you jest with me. I will take that as an intended distraction from the stress of all that could go terribly and excruciatingly wrong should I fail. Aha! Got it! Easy as mock apple pie. You can say that again. Except for the last part. Do not call me that. On pain of death. Huh. <laughs> I'd like to see you try and stop me. Captain, we should chat. Graham's got the right idea, but he isn't the right guy to execute it. I don't even think he's motivated by philosophism anymore. I think he's just guilt-ridden. Let's be frank here. He's an unhinged charlatan. You're not wrong, but get the hell off your high horse, preacher. This ain't exactly easy for me. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but... I keep going over and over it in my head, and the only way I see the Iconoclast surviving is... we depose him. Okay. Deep breaths. This is what's best, Sora. Time to save Monarch. Captain, you must be back with the access codes to our new ship. 
Graham, we need to talk. We have work to do. This isn't the time for one of our spats. What? Zora? You're running the Iconoclast into the ground, and I don't believe it'll get better after we take Stellar Bay. The troops take orders from me already, and you've... You've brought me as far as you can down the Eternal Path. It's time to step down. The troops? Listen to you. This isn't an army. They aren't soldiers. They're believers. Followers. They pick up a gun because you tell them to, not because they want to. And you, Captain, after all you've done for me, for us, you throw behind this mutinous blasphemer? I built this movement from the ground up. I've brought freedom to Monarch, and all these years later, we're still free. I joined because I believed that you were in it for the Iconoclasts. That you wanted nothing more than to bring freedom to Halcyon. That you were selfless. But... I know the truth now, Grim. I know what happened in Amber Heights. You didn't start this movement because you wanted to save us. You wanted to save yourself. No. I've spent years atoning for my sins. I've studied, meditated, taught. I built the Iconoclasts so that any man could cast away his past for a fresh start. That's your answer, Graham? You needed a fresh start? After all those innocent lives? I'm sorry. I believed in you once. I did. But it's over. Stand down. I won't. What happened back then was a mistake, and the colony has moved on. This is my movement. These are my people. If you want to lead them, you'll have to kill me. Yeah, I... I had hoped. Please, don't make me do this, Graham. If this is where my path ends, I accept it. But as long as I draw breath, I will not abandon them. So be it. We got trouble! Well, Captain, here we are. Killed a lot of people in the name of the Iconoclasts, and it never feels right. But this time, it's especially wrong. You've got the Void held me. I'll never remember what that thing is called. The device from the ship. Do you have it? I've thought about it, but... I think we're too far gone. Pulling Carlotta's support was crossing a line. You know, Captain, I never thought about that. Maybe he could be taught the eternal truth. Spread the message from within the corporations. All right. If he's willing to talk, I'll give him a chance. If the Iconoclasts reach that ship first, there won't be any chance for a peaceful monarch. I don't suppose you've found the targeting module yet. I've sent patrols, but they're running into trouble with the Iconoclasts. They're all mad! And what's more, they left us! I don't see any way for us to work together. Ugh, not this again. Remember what we practiced, sir. Yes. The words in those reviews were very hurtful, but they do not define me. I am a mantapillar, and my will is my cocoon. I can emerge and become whatever I wish. You too? She has a point, sir. And it's not all bad. Supposing you're right. 
Who exactly would you have me work with? The Iconoclasts are not the most compromising sorts. Oh, uh, how do these things ever start? Once upon a time, Graham and I saw the same problems with MSI. A rigid corporate structure with no regard for its people. But, where I wanted to reform MSI, he only wanted to take it apart. As if starving in the wilderness is somehow better than starving under corporate mismanagement. He wouldn't hear reason, and I doubt any of his successors will either. That's an interesting suggestion. I confess I don't know much about her except that she worked for Rizzo. There ain't a body on this planet that can keep a group patched up like she has. I don't know how she does it. I'd be willing to consider it, but I need to see her review first. One can't be haphazard about these things. Besides, if you think her skills will complement mine, then we should see what those skills are. Excellent. Her review would be in the Rizzo offices in Cascadia. Bring it to me, and I'll see if she's qualified. That's surprising. The board's equipment is usually in top shape. After all, they have first access to any fresh parts or components. Agreed. This is mysterious, to say the least. A conspiracy? You've spent too much time around Graham. If I hear you say survival of the fittest one more time, I'm gonna lose it. Any luck bringing the Iconoclast to the bargaining table? I don't like the idea that they'll be trying for that module while we delay. Very well. I can't promise anything, but let's see what we have here. Well, it seems like she, uh, she's actually very qualified. If it weren't for her, I'd wager the Iconoclast would have died off a while ago. All right. I'll have Celia organize a meeting in neutral territory, the old OSI church in the ruins. Meet us there, and we'll discuss terms.
Hold on to your hats, children. This ride is about to get ugly. You'll get used to it. Give it 10 or 15 years. Hey, thanks for coming. I wish I'd had more time to prepare a proper analysis on the costs and benefits of your proposed union, but uh, I suppose we'll have to improvise. Gotta admit, I really thought I was walking into a trap here. I'm ready. If it were, I wouldn't be standing here all vulnerable-like. Sanja, Stellar Bay's got food and walls. And my people need both. If you'll have us, we're willing to share the space. Do you have any idea what that would cost? Why, drawing up the budget alone is going to take weeks! Not good enough. I need to move a fair amount of my people into the city. We need shelter, Captain. Suppose some of our healthier folk could offer aid. Some of us need to stay in the city proper, though. I don't see why that couldn't be accommodated. Truly? A compromise? I'm not sure I'd ever have heard as much from Graham. Graham was a murderous fiend. And I'd be shocked if you didn't already know that. This feels like one of those times when everyone at headquarters but me is laughing at something. But you two aren't laughing. Amber Heights, you hallhead. Ten years ago, Graham had all those people killed. What? That's not possible. Even for him, that's going too far. But that means... I had no idea, I swear. Look, we were both fed up with corporate leadership, but I, I never guessed he'd do something like that. I buy it. Sanjar ain't capable of hurting a sprat, even from a distance. You can't take bureaucrats at their word. You back someone into a corner like this, and they'll say anything to get out of it. I... Okay, okay. You're right. Sorry. It'll take me a while to get over losing Graham. You know, I felt the same way years ago, when he first left. You know, there was something magnetic about him that lets you ignore the things you didn't want to see. But surely you know what that's like. Yeah, I... I do. Okay, if you're willing to house and supply some of us, I'll have our more capable soldiers help out. As am I. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure lowering already. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Sanjar. I, uh, guess I'll see you at Stellar Bay. We've changed the course of the future, Captain. You helped steer it toward the better.
wraps. Let's clear the sulfur sodden fucks out so Hayes can rest in peace. Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra 2, and we never heard from them again. I think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks, and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I should have. I... I really should have. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I... I stopped trying. Because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. I'm still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Maybe it'll stop me screaming at night. Now come on, let's make tracks before Hiram dies of old age. So much for peace and quiet. Would it kill the universe to cut me some slack? Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to shit, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Yes, the one that crashed. I saw it on the security feed. A bit grainy, but an invigorating watch all the same. What about it? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. You're not serious, are you? Yes, well, let's see how long that lasts. Not surprising, replacement parts are rare, so the cost of even a simple repair can exceed an arm and a leg. I take it you investigated the wreckage? Don't guess the captain would have quite pegged the price of disrepair being the cost of their lives, but these things happen. A shame. I would have enjoyed investigating the mystery further. Is this... bonding? I'm... I'm not sure I like it. Next, you'll be asking me how I got the scar on my chin when I was eleven. Most of it's underneath along my jaw, but yes, it seems to have faded with time. Moral of the story is, never run with scissors. The board has a blockade of gunships that patrol Monarch. Not a ton, mind you, just enough to deter the masses. I am curious as to what downed it. A faulty part wouldn't be wholly unusual. The supply for new mechanicals is tight. Ugh, now I'll never sleep. 
Unsolved puzzles really torque my sprockets. If you find out what happens, sell me the info. I'm getting a headache behind my left temple. What could be causing it? The glare from the terminal screen? Or something else? Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. We'll call it an exchange for your help with the broadcasts. Ask me what you will. What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. There are so many members. Do specify. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal, but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. Exactly. But you didn't hear so much as a whisper of such from me. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? Sanjar's not actually at fault for his past performance reviews, but he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, He's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One, once the other corporations had abandoned the planet. The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their homes in the night. Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat-drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. You mean between MSI, the Iconoclasts, and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind Monarch. Back when the colony was still Terra One and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our salvation. I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. Precisely, the other corporations were fleeing because of the Hazard Clause declaring Terra One uninhabitable. But MSI had lagged behind giving Sanjar and Graham an opportunity. Take over MSI, stay here while the other corpse left, take over the planet. Precisely. Without me, they never would have done more than play revolution in hushed whispers over scuzzy kale ales in the tavern. Thus, the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle, that he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to reform. And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is quite morally... gray. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. Not much, admittedly. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous.
and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations, considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. How low you seemingly regard my trade. I may have a secret for you, for the right exchange. How low you seemingly regard my trade. Give my regards to Phineas.